So I won't be going anywhere, despite the fact the Rover is now taxed, insured, and it has an MOT. It passed its MOT. It only had four advisories. There's a slight blow on the exhaust, there's a bit of play in the steering rack, and it's got an oil leak. But it's not got an oil leak, it's just covered in oil. I'll clean that up. But yes, it's on the road, it's legal, I can drive it, except I can't drive it because we're in lockdown. So I've just been cleaning it and tinkering with it and painting little bits of it with Hammerite because that's all I can do. But I thought, you know what, I've got enough footage from the past and I did a little bit more today. We'll call it my outside exercise time. So I thought I'll, I'll still do a video anyway. We need content now. We need um, we need a bit of something to keep us entertained, and hopefully this will be of some interest to someone. I'm not going to talk about the 800 in general. Um, I'm sure you know all about that project developed in the 80s between Honda and Rover because Honda needed a large executive car, Rover needed to replace the SD1. So Project XX, um, as it was called, was born, and that was the 800. Um, Rover did the electricals, which is worrying. Honda did the V6 in the early cars, but later it was the V6. And the rest is history. You know, people like them, people don't. I like them, and this video is about my car and why I like this car so much and what I've done to it. It all, uh, all starts for me around 1999 when I was a trainee topographic land surveyor. Um, I was an apprentice, uh, didn't really like my boss, which is why it didn't last very long, but at one point he did buy a bright red uh, T registration, so it would have been pretty much new at the time, Rover 800 Vitesse Saloon, um, the, only, the only red saloon I've ever seen, actually, and I fell in love with that car, it was the fastest thing in the world to me, um, so that was, the, that was a seed set. And years later, uh, when my daughter was born in 2006, I needed a sensible family car, so I bought a Rover 800 Vitesse for £700 from a questionable dealer somewhere up near Sheffield. Um, it was this car's clone, it was T-Reg, um, T-something-something-something LDG, um, and I had it for seven months and it worked for seven days, it went through two head gaskets, it never drove right, uh, it was slow, it was broken, it smelled faintly of wee, um, just not a good car, and in the end I sold it for £200 to some banger racers and I hope they destroyed it. Now at that time, in 2006, I was quite excited because I had my Vitesse, um, and even though it didn't live up to expectation, I knew of another Vitesse that looked exactly the same in Kongsbury, which was a town, a, a village, a couple of villages over. And I'd seen this other car and I thought, oh, isn't it funny that we've got exactly the same car? And I got rid of my Vitesse, but, you know, years went by and I'd be going down that road to Kongsbury because my me, me mother lives in Western Supermare. Um, and I'd drive past and see this other Vitesse. And it's this one. This is the car that I saw for years and years and years. But before, before we get to the how I bought it, we should talk about the why. I um I was not well a number of years ago, um, very not well, um, to the point where I very nearly became past tense, and that was not a good time. It wasn't good for anyone, but you know, least of all myself. Um, long stay in hospital. Lots of, uh, lots of medication, lots of meetings, so on and so forth. But I came out the other side, um, thanks in no small part to the support of Deb, my fiance. Um, but yeah, I came, came out the other side and it all seemed bleak, but I slowly got back on track and found work, did some consultancy work with the company that does uh, training for Lexus and things like that. And things started to improve and I started to have a regular income and I was idly looking at eBay, and lo and behold, a Zircon Silver Vitesse Saloon popped up, and it was this Zircon Silver Vitesse Saloon, the same car from Kongsbury that I'd seen for years and years and years. 
So I bought it for £475, I think I paid for it. And it was in a sorry state, and I'll come to that in a bit. But this is why this car is so special to me. This is more than just a Rover. It's not hard to be more than just a Rover. It's more than just a car. It's a symbol of me getting my getting my crap back together. It's a symbol of progress and of advancing and of getting better and of healing. And that might seem a bit deep to apply to a car that was barely cobbled together in Cowley, but there we are. That's that's what it is to me, and that's why it's so special to me, and it's why I'll never get rid of it. So I, I you know, I got it, and it was all very exciting, and had it shipped home. Didn't really know what I was doing. The car was hanging when I got it, absolutely hanging. Um, the stalks here have got symbols on them for washer, you know, headlights and all that. You couldn't see them because they were thick with old man grease. Uh, it was quite unpleasant. The recent outbreak of coronavirus didn't come from a man-eating a bat. It came from the steering wheel that was in this car. So full of mould was it. It was vile. Um, but I wasn't to be put off. So I, I cracked on and over the last couple of years I've done loads of stuff to this car. I've completely cleaned up the engine bay. Um, it's had a new clutch. It's got all new brakes on it now from um, from M-Tech brakes and braided lines, so it stops. Um, fitted a boost gauge because I'm essentially 17 in my brain. Had all the interior redone. This seat was redone. The, the bolster was all split here, and this seat was redone by um, by Craig Hughes, uh, who you might have seen on Salvage Hunters and Salvage Hunters: The Restorers. He did this seat for me. All the wood's gone. Um, covered in a carbon fibre wrap, which some people hate, don't care, it's my car, not theirs. Uh, same with the bonnet vents, don't care if people hate it, it's my car. Um, Retrimmed the interior, cleaned it all up, had the wheels refurbished. Um, the people at Falcon very kindly donated a set of tyres to the project, so it's wearing brand new Falcon rubber, lower suspension. It's had a full top to bottom service, new oil, Iridium plugs, Magna Core leads. Um, new filters throughout, um, what else, what else, what else, yeah, just, it's been completely gone over, new gearbox oil, new drive shaft gaiters, new drive shaft bits and bobs, I've done stuff to the paint as best I can, I'm not a paint expert, but it's nice, as old rovers go, I cleaned it up yesterday and it's, it's, it's nice, and damn does it drive well. I mean, it drives really well. These these later ones, um, if you're not aware, you have the first, you had the, the early Vitesse models, which were a 2.7 uh, Honda V6, and usually automatic. And then you had this one, which was, um, this was a two liter turbo, but in early cars, it had a, um, it had a dist distributor in later cars, which is what this is. It has a wasted spark coil pack So this one's 200 brake horsepower whereas the distributor car is 188 or 189 ish around there brake horsepower. So this is this is the big boy and I love it and it yeah, it drives really well um, We've yet to put a lot of miles on it because I still need to do the timing belt So I don't want to push it too hard Um it did blow a turbo um, coolant line last weekend, which was unfortunate, but it's just a, it's an age thing that the hard line was corroded. But that's what these things do, they're projects. They, um, they keep you going with more things to do. There's always something to do. And it doesn't matter if things break because it's on the road, it's road legal. And that, that feeds into the, the ethos and the purpose of this car. It's, it's, progression it's another it's a sign of advancement it's a sign of moving forward it's a sign of things improving and that's wonderful you know i don't do the lexus thing anymore as you know as you may know i am the editor for car classic which is europe's largest classic car website and it's the best job in the world ever bar none and through that progression in my personal life i've had the money to spend on this car and i've had the money to build it and get it better and that will keep going and that's why this car is so special to me it doesn't matter what the badge is. And that's something you should bear in mind with your own cars. It doesn't matter what the badge is. 
any car can symbolise anything. Any car can mean anything to any one individual. It doesn't matter if it's not popular, it doesn't matter if it's not cool, it doesn't matter if it's not fast, it doesn't matter if it's ugly, it doesn't matter if it's rusty, if it makes you happy, if it's something in your life that gives you joy and release and freedom of expression and just gives you a bit of purpose, a bit of something, that's all that matters. You know, every time I post this, most people post pictures of this, most people uh, are nice and complimentary and now you get the odd idiot with the Alan Partridge jokes which I've heard before or oh, head gasket which this is a T-series not a K-series, head gaskets aren't an issue on this engine but you get all the jokes and I don't care because it doesn't matter, it doesn't, it doesn't matter that it's a rover, it matters as a symbol, it matters as a part of my life that shows things have improved and that's why it matters and I love it I love it as a car I love it to look at I, you know, I love it from bumper to bumper it's it's my it's my perpetual headache but I wouldn't have another one it's a good car I love it and I'll never get rid of it and I'll probably spend far too much money on it and bits will fall off it when I'm driving like that which was interesting right in my face and you know some people won't get it some people will doesn't matter it's my car and it makes me happy and as I said that's all that matters for you for your cars for what you want you don't need to be a master mechanic you don't need to know everything about cars you just need something that makes you happy and gives you a bit of joy and i think that is i think that's really important especially at times like this when we're all going a bit stir crazy so there you go that's a bit on my rover 12 minutes of me waffling i hope that was insightful i hope it was something i hope it motivates you to you know go and tinker with your car go and have that escape you, you can class it as your as your bit of exercise outside washing and waxing this yesterday was exercise it's about as big as an aircraft carrier so it took a while yeah cars they just make you happy